So inshallah, this week we will continue to speak about the fadila, the rank and the status of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam as we approach the month of Rabiul Awwal. The Qur'an has many different functions in our lives. It tells us about the rulings of how to worship, for example. It tells us about what it means to be a believer, about Iman. It tells us the stories of past prophets. What lessons do we derive from these? One of the functions of the Qur'an is to teach the believers about the status of the Messenger Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam. If you honor the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, then it is a way of honoring the message which he brings. We said last week, At-ta'zim li amri Allah, honoring the command of Allah Ta'ala. So when you honor Allah Ta'ala's command, you honor the message which he sent, which is the Quran, you honor the Messenger who brought that message as well, which is the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So Allah Ta'ala alongside instructing people in what they should believe and what they should do, He also taught them about the honorable, elevated, exalted status of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam so that they would honor him and then they would obey him. Different passages of the Quran place different emphasis on different attributes of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. In Surah Al-Ahzab, Surah Al-Ahzab, Ahzab means the confederates. There was a unity between the enemies of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu and Islam at the time. Medina was surrounded and besieged by a coalition of the Meccans and other tribes who had joined them in enmity against the Prophet Sallallahu The Prophet Sallallahu was beset from all sides. The enemies had united around him. At that time, a person can lose strength. A community can consider themselves defeated. A leader can feel themselves alienated. At that time, Allah Ta'ala teaches them how to be strong as a community. So He teaches the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam how to be an excellent leader and not to lose hope. And He teaches the community how to respect their leader and how to obey their leader so that they will be a strong community following the command of their leader sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wasallam surah al ahzab has several passages in it which mentions the unique and exalted status of the prophet muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wasallam inshallah next time we will talk about the command of sending durood and salam upon the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam a unique verse in the quran ayat at tasliya the, an ayah which commands that people should send durood and salam upon him we will devote a whole week to this inshallah other passages in this chapter in Surah Al-Ahzab mention the noble status of the Prophet Sallallahu's wives, saying that they are not like the wives of anyone else. Different aspects of the Prophet Sallallahu are mentioned that he is unique. He is not like others. Now in this passage, we begin at verse 39 of Surah Al-Ahzab, chapter 33 of the Quran. Allah Ta'ala mentions the fadila of his messengers in general as a group first of all he said they are alladhina yuballighuna risalatillah they are the ones who have been selected for the task of delivering the message of allah ta'ala the messages of allah ta'ala alladhina yuballighuna risalatillah this in itself is unique about the messengers alayhim assalam wa yakhshawnahu and they fear him وَلَا يَخْشَوْنَ أَحَدًا إِلَّا اللَّهِ This is very important because Allah Ta'ala is saying that what they say, remember I said to you, وَمَا يَنْطِقُ عَنِ الْحَوَىٰ إِنْ هُوَ إِلَّا وَحْيٌ يُحَىٰ The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam does not speak from his desire, everything he says is revelation from Allah. He says here, they fear Allah, meaning they would never leave out anything which Allah Ta'ala has commanded them to do. So, وَلَا يَخْشَوْنَ أَحَدًا إِلَّا اللَّهِ They would never fear any power other than Allah. So they would fear Allah, they would obey every command of His, and they would never add in anything else which another has commanded. Everything they say is constructed by Allah, instructed by Allah, they will never add anything in at the request of anyone else. He said, Allah is enough to call people to account. There is implied threat in this, meaning 
that if they had dared to disobey, then they would have been held to account by Allah Ta'ala. It is not a light matter for Allah to send his message with the messengers and for them to disobey him. He said, then he would have called them to account. The fact that they are standing in front of you and they are preaching amongst you means they are obeying his command. If they had deviated one, one atom from this way or that way, he would have held them to account. Then he talks about the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He says, مَا كَانَ مُحَمَّدٌ أَبَا أَحَدٍ مِّنْ رِجَالِكُمْ That the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is not the biological father of any amongst you. Meaning the male believers, the adult believers, the community at that time, he is not the biological father. One relevance for this is there was a discussion about the adopted son of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Zayd radiallahu ta'ala who in this surah earlier on. So it is a way of saying he is not the biological father of any amongst you, meaning that Zayd is an adopted son. He's not the actual son. And the Prophet وسلم, we know that his children, the boys, they died in infancy and the daughters, they grew up into adulthood. So he's addressing here the community at large. He's saying he is not the biological father of anyone amongst you. But what is his status? What is his status? He said not among any of you men. Rijalikum means your men. So not, not boys, not women. Rijalikum, your men. He's not the father of any of the men. He says, walakin. But what is he? Rather, Rasulullah. He is the messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa khatam al -nabiyin. And this is a unique title that he gave the Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Khatam al nabiyin meaning he's the seal of the prophets. Meaning that amongst the prophets, he is the one who came last. He is the one who came with the final message. After this, the deen will not change. And this connects to the verse in Surah Al-Ma'idah, Al-Yawma Akmaltu Lakum Deenakum. Inshallah, we will talk about this in a future week, Inshallah. So, وَكَانَ اللَّهُ بِكُلِّ شَيْنَ alima. Allah is knowledgeable of all things. He says, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا ذْكُرُوا اللَّهَ ذِكْرًا كَثِيرًا You who believe, remember Allah Ta'ala most abundantly. أُذْكُرُوا اللَّهَ ذِكْرًا This is called fail mutlaq in Arabic. It is an emphatic form of verb. He says, remember Allah abundantly. So, أُذْكُرُوا اللَّهَ ذِكْرًا أُذْكُرُوا اللَّهَ ذِكْرًا That you should mention him abundantly. Kathira, Multitudinous. وَسَبِّحُوهُ And you should glorify him. بُكْرَةً وَأَصِيلًا Meaning morning and night you should glorify him. In the day you are busy with your worldly affairs, you don't forget him. But in the morning and the evening, you have extra time. This is your leisure time, your free time. You wake up to remember Allah. When you go to sleep, remember Allah. When you enter the day, remember Allah. When you enter the night, remember Allah. In the day, you take orders from your worldly masters. You are busy. They are telling you what to do. They keep you occupied. They instruct you, do this, do that. Don't do this, go here, go there. They keep you busy. The morning and the evening, both sides of the day. This is for your real master, the one who created you. When you wake up in the morning, who gave you life? Remember him. When you go to bed at night, who is going to hold your soul in trust through the night and give it to you back in the morning? Remember him. <laughs> he is the one who sends blessings upon you and his messengers. So that he may take you from dark, all forms of darkness to the light. Zulumat is plural, and nur is singular. There are many forms of darkness, but there is only one nur. Many ways to go astray, but one sirat mustaqim. Min al-zulumat ila nur. When Allah Taala sends His blessings upon you, and the angels are there to invoke His mercy upon you, then all of this will guide you towards the sirat mustaqim. You will open your heart to the Quran. You will receive the messenger. With, uh, you will honor the messenger, you will honor the message, receive the message, you will be guided away from all forms of darkness to the one path which is illuminated, the Sirat al Mustaqim, Ilan Nur. Allah is most merciful upon the believers. All of this guidance is the mercy of Allah Ta'ala upon the people that He gave them the blessing of Iman. Tahiyyatuhum. Their greeting on the Day of Judgment, Yawma Yalqawnahu. Look at this, how beautiful. Look how he inspires the believers. These believers are entrenched. They are facing opposition from all sides. He is teaching them how to honor their leader and be strong. And he's also giving them hope for the Akhirah. He says, look, you have troubles today. You are scared. You are worried. 
And he says, look, one day you will come to meet me. When you meet him, the day you meet Allah, he's reminding them, look ahead to the big prize. There will be a day when you will meet Allah, the one you are working for, you are striving for him. And tahiyyatuhum, you will have greetings from him. Salam. He will send salam upon you. Allah Ta'ala will send salam upon you. Tahiyyatuhum yawma yalqawnahu salam. Wa'adda lahum ajran karima. And he has prepared an honorable reward for you. All of this is waiting for you. You will be welcomed with honor on the day of judgment. You will have a meeting with Allah Ta'ala. There will be rewards from Allah Ta'ala. There will be greetings from Allah Ta'ala. And he will wish salam upon you. Peace upon you. All the trials and tribulations of this world will be forgotten. Allah Ta'ala will bless you with salam. And he will enter you into dar salam the abode of salam. Then he addresses the Prophet ﷺ, Ya ayyuhan Nabi, O Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, inna arsalnaka, surely we sent you. Then he mentions the different roles of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is a way of honoring him and exalting him. He is addressing the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, but the believers are also in the audience here. As if Allah ta'ala is addressing a noble, and so that all of the people around will know how his, the status of his nobility. He say, addresses him, say, you Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in Nar Salaka, we sent you, we sent you. When Allah Ta'ala says we, it is the plural of majesty. It means with his power and his sovereignty and his sovereignty and his command, he sent the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in Nar Salaka, and he sent him how? Shahidan, a witness, wa mubashiran, one who gives good tidings of Jannah, wa nadira, and one who warns of the day of judgment and its accountability. And one who calls towards Allah بِإِذْنِهِ with his command, with his permission. مُنِيرًا And a light, Siraj is a bright light. Munira is one which illuminates everything around it. When he tells the people he is guiding them من الظلمات إلى النور towards the light, then he also says to the Prophet Wasallam that you are Siraj and Munira. You are the illuminated one. You are the one who gives, who illuminates everything around you. So he is making it clear to the believers where they will get this guidance from, where they will get this illumination from. All of this will come if they remain steadfast, rally around the Prophet Wasallam, obey his command, be obedient, stay close to him, be steadfast. وَبَشِّرِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ Forget the troubles of this world. He said, Bashir al Mu'minin, give them good tidings. The believers give them good tidings. kabira. That there will be from Allah for them, Fadlan Kabira, a great grace and bounty from Allah Ta'ala is awaiting them in this world and the next. All of this, if they are obedient to the Prophet and they honor him and they understand his position.